this particular pattern is going to be a woven stone fly. And basically the first stage of it is going to be just to lay a thread wrap. And while we're doing that, we'll uh, cover some of the simple basics. It's a, a several step fly. It's not complicated. It's just that there, there seem to be a lot of steps to it. So um, we'll take as much of it as uh, we can get and go from there. Um, the, the hook itself is bent slightly to the near side. Partly that is to give it a little bit of wobbly action in the water and also it gets a better hook set. Um, it's just a little thing but it's, um, uh, it covers a multitude of sins. Uh, this is a, um, a non-lead wire, a tin wire, and it's going to start right on the hook itself just in front of the point of the hook and then we get 20 wraps on this particular hook size. This is a size 6, uh, which takes us right up to about the, the uh, start point of the thread there. And then we're going to lay over and do a double wrap for 8 turns. And again, this is specific to a size 6. Talking, I can't count. And then we're going to just simply flatten this. Um, what we're trying to do is to give width to the pattern. I start by mashing one end, so that'll kind of hold this end. And then from the head of it, push back and flatten. And flatten again. And then just keep working in small increments until you get that lead or the uh, tin wire, get that pretty much flattened down to the hook shank itself. Uh, if you get too ambitious and get too strong with it, you'll mash the tin wire right up against the hook shank and that will basically cut it. So we just want it to be flat but not in uh, segments. From there we're going to go back and we're going to cocoon that wire uh, with thread just simply to cover it like a spider making a spider web and we will eventually cover that whole thread, uh, the lead just working back and forth because it is a very heavy nymph it doesn't make any difference how much thread we put on it Okay, and then we're going to wind up right back at the back of the fly. And if there is any adjusting that needs to be done, it uh, would be the time to do it. Uh, next, we're going to put in a buyout tail. This happens to be goose buyout. These are fairly long segments. We're not going to use all of them, but... Uh, that will give us a pretty good look as far as the tail is concerned. These are, of course, the tails are adjustable to whatever size we want to work. But uh, try to get them laid in so that they are reasonably stable. If they need to make some adjustments, we can go back and do that. Okay. Oh. Next, we're going to just simply fill in the body with dubbing. Uh, this is part of the slow part, so uh, it's just a matter of filling in the gaps of the thread and the weight underneath and giving ourselves a nice underbody. We will eventually cover up all of this material, but it's nice to let 
the contrasting color kind of peek through the threads in places because then it looks like uh, gills and um, stones have got, uh, all the stonefly family has got some pretty good sized gills that are going to help make this a, a fairly realistic looking ply. I think whatever um, you can do to add width to this uh, particular fly is always helpful. Um, uh, we don't need to marginalize or minimize the parts of the fly, but um, by the same token, you don't want it to get loose and sloppy. Okay, um, this thread is embroidery floss, which you can get at any craft store for about a quarter a skein. It comes in all a whole entire rainbow of colors. There's um, literally hundreds of different colors. Uh, this is what the skeins look like when you buy them in the store. Uh, it's just simply um, um, embroidery floss. We're going to start by tying the darkest color on the far side and that'll give us a dark top and then a light bottom. After you get this started, it only takes you know, just a, a couple of passes to get started. Let that drop and then tie in the bottom. And then all we're going to do is run that right down the side of the fly I build a pattern so that we get half of a cross <laughs> uh, across the fly and then as we come back we finish and it then looks like uh, we've got him in a straitjacket but um, it's effective for holding all the parts together And these segmentations do match up to what's in a, 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 a real stonefly. Then when you come back, the wraps cross over and puts the little stonefly in a straitjacket or whatever. Okay, all right. This is what some people hang up on at first, and it's really not that complicated. The dark comes over the top and under the yellow, the tool, which is just a regular crochet hook, goes under, grabs the light one, brings it back through, and that is one half of one segment. Now the first one you want to get set pretty tight because that's the tail end of that thorax. Then on the yellow or in the light color we're going to go under and over. Um, the dark over the top and then under the light 
go through and pick up the light and pull it through. And then the light under and over And that gives us our second segment, okay? Dark on the top and light on the bottom, okay? And then along each edge, you've got where the color change takes place and it literally looks like spots along the side of that, of the body. So that's one of the beauty parts of, uh, of a of woven pattern as opposed to a uh, a wrapped or a braided because you've got the uh, intermixing of colors and um, I think that makes a big difference in making it look more realistic. Um, this is just going to be mileage till we get it done. Arc the dark over the top, pick up the light, Until you get the rhythm of it down, it, it may be complicated, but uh, for whatever purpose, uh, women pick this up a lot faster than men do because they, they're used to doing macrame and they're uh, used to doing knitting and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it just takes some of us a little longer to get the program or those. But it's not that complicated. In the size six, I've tried to put nine segments um, in the body. Uh, you can see now how the segments are building up. There are four segments, and I count them by the, uh, the little knots on, the, on the, the side. Okay, that's, um, uh, that's uh, eight, and I believe this uh, will be the finish of number nine. So for a number six hook, we have done nine segments. There's not any real correlation between them other than that's just what fits up to that point. In order to uh, finish... Uh, this off, I'm just going to simply pull the threads across the body in kind of an X fashion and tie them off. In order to give some basis to uh, the fly going forward, I'm then going to pull that forward, that selvage forward and just tie it down the fly so we've got a little bit of bulk underneath there and there's not such transition between where we finished our weave and we're going to put the shell itself. Okay, that's got us pretty much through the woven part of it. Uh, the next piece that we're going to add to it is going to be uh, the wing case itself. And this is going to be a layered wing case like in all stoneflies. Um, we're starting it a little bit further forward again to give us a little bit of a platform. Oh, this is turkey tail feather. And it's been stabilized with a head cement and um, then it is just simply cut from the stalk, give us those pieces of the shell back itself. As far as width is concerned, I measure against the bend of the hook. Um, take about two thirds of that measure of the hook, slide it into where the width is going to go 
pull it out and that gives you as good a measure as you're going to get. So um, that's just a handy method, uh, measure method. Okay, now we're going to add legs and these are also going to be the same color biots that we use for the tail and it will also be the same for the uh, antenna. Some people try to tie these um, paired up at, at a time, and it's just um, it's n nice if you can do it, but it just uh, makes it a little more complicated, and it's really not necessary because you're going to have to adjust them anyway. About the only thing that's different at this point is... Um, Okay, the next step is going to be to add this uh, ostrich hurl, which gives us a, um, a nice gill look, and it also helps cover the uh, thread accumulation on the bottom of the fly. With all stoneflies, you've got a tiered wing case because they've got two distinct sets of wings. After a billion years, they still haven't learned to fly with them, but they, uh, they're just awkward flyers is all. They really do fly pretty good. It makes the trout dance around looking for them. The addition of the hurl is adding that filament look to the bottom of the fly. The second set of legs goes in just like the first. You want to try to keep them as balanced as you, you can. I'm just uh, wrapping that uh, ostrich hurl back around again to kind of fill in and to uh, give it a little bit more natural look. Now I'm going to clip that off and clip off the uh, butt section of the legs. And before we uh, bring that shell forward, I'm going to get a smaller piece of our, uh, uh, pieces of uh, buy out for the antenna just because they were give a little bit better shape if they're small or thinner.
And then we're going to go back and get a little bit of dubbing to, again, add some contrast to the front uh, right by the um, ostrich hurl. And again, it looks like the uh, filament at the head of a stone fly. Um, all of this, uh, the, the filament uh, look is uh, actually breathing gills on these flies. They are fast water flies, but they uh, float downstream, so they need a lot of methods of getting oxygen into their system. Okay, now we're going to fold that segment over for the last time and that will give us the tiered effect. And that uh, pretty much finishes up the fly. We're going to pull the shell back forward and then tie it off. And I'm going to put one little collar of dubbing on that thread. And it's as much to cover the thread as anything else, but it gives um, a little bit of an eye look as compared to just the shell itself. Um, sometimes when uh, we want it to be even more realistic fly, we can put in uh, monofilament that's been burned on the end so that we've got true eyes that stick out from the edge of that material and um, then it's about as real as it's going to get. A whip finish, and you've got yourself a stone fly. And within luck at all, we have all of the negative spaces on the bottom covered, or reasonably close. And that gives you a pretty good looking stonefly.